All right, so if you clicked on this video, you probably recently watched the movie Game Changers. And like me, you probably thought it was an amazing movie. And also like me, you're probably super hyped on this plant-based lifestyle. However, unlike me, you probably haven't been doing it for 10 years and you probably have some questions. I know you guys are sitting there like, okay, I just watched this amazing documentary of all these plant-based athletes who are absolutely killing it. And I want some of that but where the heck do I begin? So in this video, I'm gonna answer some of the most commonly asked questions that I've been getting from people who recently watched this movie and are kind of new to the vegan or plant-based lifestyle and some tips that I wish that I'd learned when I first started. So my name is Derek from Sydney Nutrition. I'm a holistic nutritionist. I also absolutely love calisthenics and weight training, but one of my biggest passions is to help people take control of their health and take control of their life by giving them the tools necessary to do so. And I think in this video, it's definitely gonna be a start. It's not gonna be your complete guide to going vegan, but it is gonna give you a starting point for sure. So because this movie is about and aimed at athletes, most of the DMs and questions that I'm getting are from guys and girls who are either into bodybuilding or who are into a specific sport who want to know about vegan macros and protein. Like that's the most common question that I've been getting in my inboxes lately are, Derek, I just watched the movie Game Changers and I'm totally on board. I think this is definitely like the way I want to move. However, I just cannot figure out my vegan macros they're not fitting into my usual macro splits so I'll definitely touch on that first because that is the number one question that I'm getting what's important to understand right off the bat is that most of the whole plant-based foods where we're gonna be obtaining most of our calories from are just naturally high in carbohydrates that's just the nature of the food and we're gonna have to just get used to it and it's not a bad thing at all and I'll explain that in a minute but um, take beans for example like black beans uh, a relatively high protein food as far as you know plant-based foods go however it's still 75 percent calories coming from carbohydrates so you can see how this is going to be a problem if you're going to try and keep your usual like 40 40 20 macro split it's just not going to work if you want to eat a whole foods plant-based diet so we really have to try and get away from this reductionist approach where we reduce our foods down to just the three macronutrients that they contain because food is so much more than just those three macros and it has so much other nutrition in it that helps us to build muscle to recover faster and just for overall health that just looking at those three things uh, really is such a small piece of the picture. And in my opinion, it is not the best way to get results. I mean, I think that I have had pretty decent results over the five years or so that I've been training and I've never calculated my calories or macros or anything like that. I mean, I do here and there for what I eat in a day videos, which we will go over in just a minute. Um, but yeah, just eating whole plant-based foods is so supportive to whatever goals that you have that really it's not important to count those macros anymore. And I know this is so hard to get through our heads because it's in so many like muscle magazines and so many trainers have taught us to count our macros and it's the best way to change our body composition. But in my experience and in my opinion, that is not true at all. The most important thing in my opinion for changing body composition is total calories that we're taking in and then of course the type of training that you're doing. But there's so much more involved in it. Like there's hydration, there's also sleep recovery so much more to it than just the food but obviously that's what we're targeting here today so just because I said that plant foods are high in carbohydrates it doesn't mean that they are gonna make you fat and I know a lot of people just associate carbs with weight gain and that is not the case at all whole plant-based foods are just naturally high in carbohydrates and they're gonna support a healthy weight I promise you however you know, when you're talking about refined carbs, like refined sugar or, you know, cereals or, uh, you know, donuts and pizza, which a lot of the time are mostly fat, not carbs. But this is what a lot of people talk about as refined carbs. Those are the foods that when eaten in excess um, and that are easy to eat in excess are going to lead to unwanted weight gain. Got an email. <laughs> The beauty of whole plant-based foods is that they're so high in nutrients, full of antioxidants, rich in fiber, and got tons of water in it, that it makes it really hard to overeat. So if you're anything like me and you love to eat a lot of volume and you love to feel full, then this is so perfect for you. And with the anti-inflammatory properties that this lifestyle and this diet has, you're gonna be able to recover so much faster, get out there and train sooner so you can continue to smash your goals even better. So here I tracked my food for a day for a YouTube video a little while back and I thought I'd include this just so you guys can get an idea of like what I eat in a day and what my macro split is from what I'm eating. So if you need to stop this at any time throughout to see it in more detail, definitely go ahead and do that. But you can see for breakfast, I just had like a smoothie bowl and then for lunch, I had a little tempeh salad with a sauce and then for dinner, I had a chickpea stir fry with a little salad on the side and some sauce as well. 
So on this day I ate just over 2200 calories and I would say that's just about average for me. I'm not an overly huge guy, I'm about 65 kilograms, 145 pounds, so that falls right in around my maintenance if I'm working out. And then you can see the way that the macros are split up here. I'm getting 63% of my calories from carbs, 21 from fat, and 15 from protein. And I would say that this day is actually probably a little bit higher in fat than I get on most days, but it is a pretty average representation of what I eat. And as we scroll down here a little further and look at the micros, you can see that a lot of the RDIs were met. It wasn't an absolutely perfect day of eating, but I would say that is pretty dang good. And if you look at the very bottom left hand corner, you can see I got nearly 100 grams of protein, which I think is more than enough for myself and it's been more than enough for me to uh, build muscle mass and attain the physique that I have today. So yeah, I'm not overly obsessed with protein. However, I do focus on getting a few higher protein sources in throughout the day um, or at each meal. So I just make sure I have something like beans, lentils, uh, quinoa is a good one, tofu, tempeh, um, or even like a scoop of protein powder in my post-workout smoothie. So if we can start to slowly forget about counting our macros and think more about the quality of food that we're eating and eating them in the proper amounts, then you're gonna find that you're thinking and stressing less about food, enjoying it more, and your body is gonna change its composition naturally and more intuitively. But eating in the right amount is really important. So it is important to find out what our total daily expenditure is, especially when we're first starting on this lifestyle, and then to track your food to make sure you're within a few hundred calories of that, either up or down, whether you're wanting to gain weight or lose weight. So our total daily expenditure is basically just like our basal metabolic rate with the calories that we need to do our daily activities added on top of that. So there's a really good calculator on plantspace.org, uh, and basically you just type in like your age, your sex, your height, your weight, your activity level, and then it spits out how many calories you need throughout the day just to maintain the weight that you're at right now. So of course, if you wanna gain weight, you're gonna to wanna to bump it up by a couple hundred calories. If you wanna lose weight, you're gonna to wanna to go down by a few hundred calories. And I do recommend that people track their calories uh, when they first start eating a plant-based diet because what happens is the food is so much less calorically dense than meat and dairy, you're gonna find that you're eating a lot of volume. And if you don't track at, for a little while at first at least, and this goes especially to guys, you might find that your weight is you know, you're getting lighter, you're getting leaner, maybe a little bit quicker than you want. So definitely track at first, as much as I hate doing it and it's a little bit tedious, um, you're gonna quickly learn how much food you need to eat and then it'll be really easy to uh, intuitively do that. And tracking your food right at the beginning is also gonna help to make sure that you're getting the right amount of micronutrients as well. So while I don't think it's necessarily important to hit 100% of your RDI every single day, uh, it is important to look at trends and if you notice that you're consistently being a little bit low in calcium or iron or something like that, then you're going to want to eat foods to bump those numbers up. And I know a lot of you guys were wondering what that program was that I was just using. It's called Chronometer. So they have uh, an app and a website as well and it's just like my fitness pal or something like that. However, I just really like the uh, user interface. I find it really easy to use and they have a huge database of foods. So that's why I use this one. But Feel free to use whatever one works for you. So I wanna take a quick minute to talk about protein before I move on. So I know a lot of people get worried and they get hung up on protein. Am I gonna be getting enough? Am I gonna be getting enough of those essential amino acids? Because there's this notion out there that plant foods have to be combined in order to get the right amino acids. And it sounds like really confusing and a lot of people just go, well, I don't think that I have the patience or the know-how to do that, so I'm just not even gonna try at all. But let me tell you that every single plant food out there contains all nine essential amino acids. Yes, it's true. If you don't believe me, go check that program chronometer that I just showed you and put in 200 calories of any food that you want. 200 calories of celery, 200 calories of broccoli, 200 calories of carrots. I don't care what it is, any plant food, any whole plant food, and you're gonna see that every single essential amino acid is represented. So there is some truth that some plant foods are lower in a certain amino acid and there's other that are higher in you know, that amino acid. So like beans and rice are complementary foods because the one amino acid that beans are low in, rice is high in it and vice versa. However, we don't have to eat those foods at the same meal 
or even in the same day to get the benefits of that. So our, like decades ago, we found this out and our bodies are really smart and they're really efficient and they recycle amino acids over the course of about 48 hours, so about two days. So as long as you're eating a variety of plant foods and you're getting enough calories, I promise you, you will be getting enough protein. And you can always do what I do is, you know, search for a few high protein sources throughout the day. So, you know, your beans, your lentils, your tempeh, your tofu, maybe a scoop of plant-based protein powder and there will be no issues with protein. So one tip that's helpful for a lot of people is to take time transitioning and just focus on progress over perfection. And while I would absolutely love everybody to just go 100% vegan overnight, it's really not a reality for a lot of people. And in order to make a long lasting habit, you do have to transition into it over time. Like. How many people do you know that are like, all right, I'm gonna do the P90X challenge and I'm gonna get so shredded and they work as hard as they can for like two or three workouts and then like that's it, they just can't sustain it. And it's because exactly that, it's not sustainable. However, if they had worked up to that point, and you know, started to increase their workouts slowly over time, then it would be a lot more sustainable because you build those habits. And making a big lifestyle change, like changing the way you eat, is definitely like one of the biggest changes that you're gonna make. And props to all you guys out there who are doing it, who are taking control of your health, who are looking at the evidence, who are looking at others around you who are killing it, and who have found yourself in this lifestyle, because I'm telling you, I've been doing this for 10 years, and I have not looked back once. So some of the reasons why it helps to transition over time is because it will take you some time to figure out delicious meals that you can cook, what you can bring to work that'll like keep in the fridge, uh, you know, different restaurants around your workplace or school that have vegan foods. You know, it's all about the long haul here and that's why I say progress over perfection. So while your friends and family might take a little while to come around to this lifestyle and it might take a little while for you to wrap your brain around all this new knowledge that you're getting, it's definitely gonna take some time in order for your body to adapt to this new way of eating. We must remember after years, maybe even decades of eating a certain way, we have harbored a very specific balance of microbes in our gut that are used to us eating the way that we do. And if all of a sudden you change your diet and rather than eating meat, eggs, dairy, and some processed food or whatever, all of a sudden you're eating whole plant-based foods and just cramming all this fiber into your gut, uh, you might have some trouble and you might find that you get gas, you get bloating, and some other symptoms that you don't like. So this is why it's important to give our body some time to adjust. Some foods you'll find you do better with than others, but for most people, at least at first, having a lot of beans or lentils at one sitting can be quite difficult. So definitely increase that you know, by small amounts over time. And while we're on the topic of digestion, I just want to mention that you need to chew your food a lot, especially once we start eating more whole plant-based foods. It's really important to chew a lot. Like you want to turn your food into pretty much like a liquid in your mouth before you swallow. I know it's kind of gross to think about, um, but yeah, you really want to be chewing it like 20 to 30 times. And if you're having trouble with digestion and you're not chewing your food enough, start chewing your food enough and watch your digestion improve. So I mentioned friends and family back there quickly and I just want to touch on the subject a little bit more because I think it is an important one. And I know a lot of you with this new information that you're equipped with and this new like passion for this whole foods plant-based lifestyle, you want to share it with everyone around you and the first people that you go to are your friends and your family. And a lot of the time they're not as receptive to it as you wish they were and it can be really frustrating. But let me just tell you through experience, friends and family are some of the hardest people to sort of you know, convinced that this is a lifestyle that they should be living. And I don't know why it's like that, but it just is. So the only advice that I have for that is to just do you, don't compromise on your values or your health for anyone else's convenience. And uh, if you have the chance, you know, if you're going to like a dinner or whatever, just make like a huge bowl of something nice and bright and colorful and delicious that you can share with people. And you know, if you're sitting around the dinner table with your family, like don't just go and like, you know, get a couple pieces of white bread and, and just put some like vegan cheese on that and just sit there in the corner eating that. Like, no, like, you know, make some really amazing foods that you can share with them and show them that this lifestyle is abundant and it's not that you're gonna be cutting so many things out of your diet, you're gonna be introducing so much more. So while your friends and family might not be willing to make the big lifestyle change that you have, I hope they are at least supportive. Uh, but whether they are or not, it's really important to feel a sense of community when you're making changes like this and to not feel alone. So you have found yourself here on my channel, uh, which is a really supportive place. The comment section of my videos are a great place to find encouragement and to also get some answers to some simple questions. And there's so many other channels out there like mine. Instagram is another really good way to 
uh, you know, interact with other people who are living this lifestyle. Not feeling alone is really important. So if you can find like a friend or something to do it with, it's definitely helpful. But if not, we're here for you. Watching channels like mine will help you twofold because not only will you feel a sense of community and that you're not the only one doing this, but you'll also get some ideas on what you can eat. So I have a whole bunch of what I eat in a day videos on here that you can check out that will give you lots of ideas on breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and even snacks. Uh, and I'm like constantly posting on my Instagram stories. I'm showing my meals almost all the time and I try and give at least a little bit of information on like how I cooked it or what I cooked there. And there's a bunch of other amazing vegan YouTubers out there as well and I don't want to list off a ton because I know I'm gonna forget some but a couple of my close friends are John Venus and Brian Turner they eat really similarly to me and they're both like thriving on this they're both massive guys making tons of gains so definitely check out their channels if you need some more inspiration and some more ideas oh, and I can't forget about the plant-based doctors that are leading this movement there are so many reputable and knowledgeable doctors who are in this scene that I owe like a lot of my knowledge to so a couple of my favorites are like Dr. Michael Greger from nutritionfacts.org. I absolutely love Dr. Neil Barnard. He's got some amazing talks here on YouTube. Uh, Dr. Clapper is another good one. Dr. Esselstein. Dr. Garth Davis, he's another favorite of mine. And I'm sure I'm forgetting a whole bunch of them, but uh, there's a couple for you to at least go off of. So I feel like this video wouldn't be complete if I didn't talk about supplementation. I know it's something that's on a lot of people's minds and it's so funny like some of the most popular questions I get when I tell people that I'm vegan are where do you get your protein and how do you get B12? And B12 is so simple to get from just taking a supplement and I think vitamin D3 if you don't live somewhere like around the equator I think D3 is really important throughout the darker months of the year when you're not seeing so much sun. Another supplement that I consistently consume would be protein powder. So it's just a nice way to bump up your protein without having to smash in a whole bunch of more calories and fibrous foods. So yeah, you know, protein powder is not specific to just vegans. You don't need to have it to thrive on a vegan diet just the same way that you don't need to have it to to you know build muscle on an omnivorous diet uh, but it is something that I choose to have and I do like to use uh, the brand Viva Life I'm an ambassador for them but I do like their products because they're heavy metal tested they're 100% vegan they're organic uh, they give back to the community they're just introducing like compostable packaging uh, it tastes amazing it's fermented so it's not uh, it doesn't bloat you out like crazy yeah, it's a really, really amazing product. I'll put a link to that in the description down below. I have a discount code Derek10 for 10% off. It's not the reason why I'm doing this video. I just want to share it with you guys um, because I do get lots of questions on what protein powder I do consume. One other nutrient that you want to be conscious of are omega-3s. So you just want to make sure that you're getting some sort of source of it throughout the day. Um, ground flaxseed, hemp, chia seeds, walnuts are all really good sources. So just make sure to have a tablespoon or two of those throughout the day and you're going to be good with those. So if I have any like final closing remarks or pieces of advice, it would be continue to make the foods that you already know and love. Just veganize them. So if you're used to having, you know, like burritos or whatever, just get used to making like bean and rice uh, veggie burritos. So if you're used to having uh, scrambled egg in the morning, learn how to make tofu scramble. If you absolutely love having uh, I don't know, like steak stir fries. Uh, throw some tofu in there and make a veggie stir fry instead. So that's gonna be the easiest way for you to transition because it's gonna be familiar to you and you're gonna already know how to cook all these things. But cooking is a big important one. You're gonna have to learn how to cook. You're gonna have to learn how to make really good food. But just by practicing and time, you're gonna become better at it. So fill up your spice cupboard, go out and buy a whole bunch of good spices so you can season your food and make it taste amazing. There's also tons of these mock meats and meat substitutes that are on the shelf these days and while I think that they can be really helpful for people who are transitioning and can be a nice treat every once in a while for someone like myself who still likes those types of foods it's definitely not the end goal to be eating lots of those foods we really want to try and minimize the amount of processed foods that we're eating and you know the processed meats and those sorts of things obviously fall in that category so enjoy them now you know try some here and there but don't just base your entire meal around this like don't cook up like three packages of Gardein and call it dinner no like maybe have you know a half a pack of Gardein chicken strips or whatever and then make like a nice veggie stir fry and a salad or something to go along with it and um, that will help you transition a lot better than if you just sort of tra transition from eating like an omnivorous diet to a junk food vegan diet it's definitely not what you want to do because you're not gonna feel the full effects of it and it's gonna make it harder to stick with it so just remember to have some fun with it enjoy 
enjoy the process and don't get too worried if you stumble along the way. When you're making a huge lifestyle change like this, it is bound to happen. You're gonna buy something that you thought was plant-based and it's gonna have like milk hidden in it somewhere or you're gonna burn your food or you're gonna eat something that gives you like an upset stomach and tons of gas and bloating. And uh, it's just gonna happen. And I promise you over time, all those things are gonna get better. You're gonna get better at cooking. You're gonna figure out what foods work for you and your body's gonna start to adjust and you're gonna feel the full effects of this lifestyle. And yeah, let me tell you, for me, there's been no looking back. I'm 36 in a couple days now and I feel better than I ever have. I have so much energy throughout the day to do whatever I want and uh, you know, lots of mental clarity and just feeling amazing. And you get to help the animals and the environment and make yourself healthier at the same time. Nobody loses. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, definitely put them in the comment section down below and either myself or somebody from the community will help you out. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and power to all of you who are making these amazing changes, taking control of your health. I'm proud of all you guys. See you soon with another video. Bye. Oh my goodness. Keep going. I'm stuck. <laughs> You're stuck. Hey. Let's try this.